out that i wanted but we are learning what's up girl welcome to the show man hey hey culture fuzz happy to be here thank you for having me absolutely absolutely so real quick to my listeners and to my viewers um if you see that the setup is a little bit different today that's because uh this is my second attempt at filming this through obs so if you see some weird shit some weird cuts just bear with me i'm learning i'm learning but um I wanted to welcome you guys to another Culture Fuzz uh, podcast episode where I bridge the gap to people, places, products, and ideas that is going to make a quality difference in your life. And today I have a very, very, very special guest uh, by the name. She goes by Pretty Black, and I want to welcome her to the show. She is a phenomenal, phenomenal, just her gift with words is like something else, man. She is a uh, she's a poet. She's a writer. She's a rapper. She is a model now. She is just everything. Uh, what is up, girl? How you doing? I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm um, I'm feeling good and happy to be here and happy to still be COVID free in this that part. In this time. So that part. yeah, I'm doing good. And that intro, girl, I should have had that version on my album. Girl, you can still. No, you know what? Honestly, okay, so real quick, uh, me and Pretty Black, we, um, she is actually under Social Club Recording, and I just did an interview with the president of the company, Eugene, so she is his artist, so I have had the blessing of being able to listen to her build her album and make her album mm-hmm. and the beats being created for her. So when I heard the version of uh, UNITY, when I heard that sample, I was like, can you do some sort of a variation of that for my podcast? Because I love the unity message. So Dope. yeah, just that's just Eugene on the beat, just killing it, flipping it, doing what he oh, usually yeah. does. You know what I'm saying? Because our, our beats sound so totally different. I'm like, dang, that sounds good too. Could be the remix. remix with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to do a remix for that one. Man, so. please take sure. it. Bless the beat. Please bless the beat. <laughs> so before I get started uh, with anything, real quick, I just want to like do my soundboard real quick because I... That's what I wanted to do at the end of that song, but uh, that's my like little dance hall horn. I'm so excited for that sound. Meg knows what. No, I love Meg. that sound. <laughs> it's just like appropriate for any situation. Um, but Literally. before we move forward, and I really dive into your uh, upcoming project, Bantu Knots, which I cannot freaking wait for that. Um, oh, I actually had a photo of the album cover, but I'll just pop that in there. Um. But I wanted to play a little bit of your uh, recent single right now that you have on Spotify, Underdog. Yes. So I'm going to play a little bit of a snippet like that because I need y'all to get a taste. I need y'all to get a taste of what what she's coming with so you can just, uh, just, gra- just grasp this situation here. So this is her current single. You can find it on Spotify right now, uh, Underdog. Can you hear it okay? Yes. And you got the album version. Uh, uh, yeah. Social club when I slide out with it. Shout out 
Shotgun if I ride out with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw me the beat, I'm a wild out with it. Yeah, uh, just make room for the underdog, bitch. Yeah, just make room for the underdog, bitch. Uh, yeah, just make room for the underdog, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make room for the. Just make room for the. Uh, just make room for the underdog, bitch. types of sound bites i'm ready uh so yeah y'all that is um miss pretty black with the underdog like i'm just saying that's one of those like who i need to grab my nuts my like imaginary nuts and just roll around <laughs> just fucking doing right? donuts in the parking lot no i love it i absolutely love it i love it because it's like you are such a feminine woman but there's so much masculine energy in that song and i appreciate it because it's like i'm just sitting here i was like i got so damn amped can you talk about that song a little bit like what it's about what the motivation was definitely so um i, I love how you describe that as that there was like so much like i'm feminine but there's so much masculine energy because i feel that's like my person my you know my alter ego or whatever, like how Beyonce had, Beyonce, who the hell is Beyonce? <laughs> Beyonce had um, Sasha Fierce. I don't have no name for my alter ego. Maybe it is just pretty black, but um, I, I feel a lot of, uh, when I do spit, there's a lot of like alpha uh, masculine energy. So the underdog came from actually, um, well, it started out with Eugene O'Neill, him, um, throwing out that beat because I think that was at the time when we first started creating it it was a new beat that he had so he was like uh do something to this and he throws it out there and I'm like okay I'm digging this and then he starts coming up with the whole concept of a video like because that's how our minds work we all we hear the song then we see the video then we hear the whole thing put together so we're just going shooting it out there and um because initially this was not going to be the single it wasn't I was like going to release Queen and Slim as um my single single um with just like an updated version of soul sister but uh we just went with underdog and so the reason that we even got the title underdog from it is because um I'm just in my car creating. That's where I create like 98% of the time I'm in my car and that's where I create like every song. And um I just start spitting, you know, freestyling. I never write down anything. And so then I just start singing the hook underdog just make room for the underdog bitch and so what underdog came from is that this is basically like my return to music my return to uh just the scene of, of rapping period because I'm mostly in recent like in the last recent 10 years I'm known for my spoken word poetry um as pretty black and so if you didn't know me prior to that they don't even know that I rap um, I was about to say, because I was like, okay, because that bar, okay, that bar in there where you're like, y'all didn't even know that Pretty Black can rap. It's like, no, we didn't. Like, none of us exactly. did. Because like, okay, real quick. So shout out Eugene O'Neill. His, what what album were you speaking the, the spoken word on? It was not this recent album, but his well, last no, album. It was the album right before um, Good Good for Health, uh, or Bad for Health, Good I for Education. I mix it up all the time, too. Sorry. I know. <laughs> sorry, but sorry, man. <laughs> Um, so it must have been Tomorrow's Midnight. I think it's Tomorrow's yes. Midnight. Yeah. Tomorrow's so y'all need so to I go. So I narrated that. Yes. That whole thing with poetry. Yes. And it's... she didn't even know I could rap at that time. No. Okay. So she laid down all of the bars for her poetry for the intros of every song. And then like randomly, did you, didn't you want, didn't you ask that you wanted to like lay down a few verses or you wanted to rap real quick? So how that went, um, it was like the, and you guys will hear it on my album and my outro, I kind of lay out like the whole situation, but um, it was like at the end of 2019-ish, I was like, just decided in my head, you know how you get those ideals where you're like, I'm going to step out and I'm going to do this shit finally, you know, I'm going to do it again. So it was at the 20, end of 2019, I was like, it was I was like vibrating fucking hella low that year. And I was just like, you know what? I'm watching Wu-Tang Saga. 
I'm like, shit, I can still spit. Fuck it. I'm about to spit and drop something <laughs> up here. So it ha- I happened to log on to Facebook and Eugene had posted um, a post saying, I'm looking for a female artist to work with to get in the studio. She could rap or sing. I don't give a fuck. So I'm like, I hit him. I'm like, um, me. And so Eugene's probably like laughing in his head because he's like, yeah, I know you do poetry. I'm looking for an artist. And I was like, no, I, you know, I want to lay down something. I'm like, okay. So I come to the studio and, um, you know, I'm like, I put on the beat, was DJ uh, Premier Devil's Pie beat. And I'm like, I'm going to lay a freestyle to this. And he's like, okay, whatever. He puts it on. He walks out the room and then he comes back in the room and he hears me spitting. And he's like, what? <laughs> he's like, wait a minute, what? He's like totally like shit face, like just shocked. Like, wait a minute, you said you do poetry. I didn't know you could rap. So that that's pretty much been the basis of of everything from everybody. Like, what you rap? And it wasn't even like, oh, she raps. It was like, damn, god damn, what Jesus? Uh, rapping out here better than the most seasoned, seasoned vets that I've listened to. So right. I'm Thank really you. excited. So I'm very, very, I can't wait. I cannot wait for this album to drop. Um, Bantu Knots. Can we talk about, uh, can we talk about the name? Like where did the name come from? What inspired the name? I love the name by the way. And your album cover is everything. Thank you. So uh, Bantu Nuts, it's, it's kind of like a deep story behind it. Um, actually, it wasn't random. Now, for me to name my entire album Bantu Nuts, that was the decision of, again, Eugene, um, because I had actually just named one song Bantu Nuts. And Eugene, as soon as I said it, Eugene was like, nope, name the whole album that. And I'm like, what? He was like, name the entire album that. So I'm like, fine, go ahead. So that's what we did. And I actually love it because, um, this whole album is so intentional and it stays on topic with exactly what I was going through right before the time that I got signed to social club recordings and um, Bantu knots is, I don't know if everybody's familiar with what Bantu knots are. I'm just going to not trying to be redundant, but I'm just going to explain them. So it's basically a, um, a hairstyle that is popularized and is known in the um, African American culture. It's like, where you, you know, you twist your hair up and you roll it into knots. So you have a whole bunch of knots all over your head. Um, basically I wore my hair like that to work one day. And, um, uh, there's this coworker I had, she's like an older white lady, um, from like that era, you know what I'm saying? So she's like all super, you know, enthralled with black women and black people and, and their hair. And how do you get it like that? And all that kind of weird shit, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I go in with my hair like that and she's just like, oh my God, wow. So, you know, fine. If she would have left it at that, I would have been like, whatever. She, that's her. But she just couldn't resist. So she came back like an hour after that. And she was like, "Um, do you know who you remind me of with your hair like that? And I'm like, who? She was like, that kid Buckwheat. (gasps) (laughs) Yes, I'm laughing now. I'm laughing and keep from being so yeah, upset. Yeah. She was like, yeah. <laughs> kid buckwheat from the little rascals. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, bitch, like, I'm about to like fucking wring your neck at this point. But I'm like, no, you're still at working the job. So, um, you know, it was just, it's just a whole thing. It's still ongoing right now behind her. So I don't want to like give her too yeah, much yeah, energy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, um, but that's where that stemmed from. It's just like, you know, a black woman can't go into the workplace in her natural hairstyle or something that's appropriate to her culture and without being told that they look like buckwheat or some bullshit from a thing. So that's kind of what I based that um, my whole album around. So like the plight of black women in America in general and what we go through and how People are always trying to uh, break our spirit, even if it's uh, unintentional or even if it is intentional. It's just like um, basically that. So that's what I that's why the album is called Bantu Knots, because each knot represents something different. It's like a very um, it is a, a definitely a very uh, pro black and um, pro woman um, album, but it has a little bit of everything in there. So it's like, you'll see most of the topics on that album are very, uh, pro woman, uh, pro black, but then 
all of my features are mostly dudes. <laughs> I <laughs> and love I that. that. I, did Diana, that girl. I was about <laughs> to ask, I was like, this entire project just seems like an perfect, perfect alignment. The timing, the message, mm-hmm. And the dynamic, the power dynamic has in the yeah. role reversals in this, because usually it's like the man rapping about stuff that you're rapping about. And then they have mm-hmm. like the woman features, but you're just like, no, like, and I know it wasn't intentional, but it's such, right. such a power play, even though, even though mm-hmm. it was unconscious. So it's really refreshing yeah. to see that. And not only that, that. I'm going to just say it. I was like, you might be rapping better than some of the features on your album. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, that's how much I'm like, no, you were just that Thank skilled. You. And you were like, you can give a lot of these. Cause the rapping, the rapping industry is so male dominated. When you think of rappers, you know, you think of men, mm-hmm. like, you know, you have your heavy hitters, uh, the ones mm-hmm. that blaze the trail, like Queen Latifah, Lil mm-hmm. Kim and stuff like that. But like mm-hmm. in this current day and age, you know, I can't really think of any female rappers that I'm like, damn, she got bars. I'm like, maybe Cardi every once in a while. Lady London, right. she's creeping up. I'm like, I'm really, really she's like, she's dope. Um, I like there, her. There, there's a few dope uh, female, like really dope. I mean, of course, like, that are, like all, strong. All have different styles. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, my style is not like most of them, but um, I respect and I appreciate like their shit because like I remember one thing was my cousin said to my brother because my brother is um he's like from the 80s generation and yeah. he's like real hardcore like hip hop it's an ain't KRS one and uh Big Daddy Kane and, and Rock Kim and them like wow. shit. Yeah. So he was like, What is you know, he's going in on it and my cousin was like, Well, I like Lauren Hill if I want to chill. She's like, But if I'm trying to go to the club and turn up, I'm not about to be playing on no Lauren Hill. <laughs> I'm just like she it's makes like that's gonna get me in my feelings. Like, <laughs> exactly, it makes sense. So I, I mean, I respect it all for the most part, but yeah, like you said, it's not really a lot of uh, female. And that's the thing is, like, don't get me wrong. I love my booty shaking music. I love mm-hmm. my turkey mu- my turkey music, my twerking music. My like, I love that music, but when it comes to just conscious rap, like it's, it's a skill. Like I, like when like rapping well, like rap, like hip hop to me, Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's a difference. I was like, you got, you got hip hop. That's like mainstream that, that is for the masses. You got to make sure it's for everybody. But, and I understand that. But when I look behind that and I look at the true artists behind that, I still can't say, Oh, they got bars. You know what I'm right. saying? So, like, I said it, coming at me. Let's have a conversation. <laughs> but because it's like, let's do it. Let, let's analyze this because right. I like put them in a cipher. I want to see what's up. Yes, they got top charting hits. Put them in a cipher. Yeah. I want to see what's exactly. up. So, oh that, yeah, it's totally a different art, uh, a yeah. different art form. It's a difference between rap and then hip hop and MCing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so that's what I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh, no, you know. But uh, <laughs> but um, I also want to pay, p- play a snippet. Um, your intro. Uh, I feel like the intro that you have or your verse that you have on IYF and your feelings. Love that song. Was that your like first intro? Like your first like like mastered mixed project of like here's a taste of what y'all about to get. I'm thinking back because shit, we did, we, we done like 2020. I know like with COVID and everything, um, it really stunned a lot of stuff. So it was like, we couldn't move the exact same, but in the same instance, we got so much shit so done much, <laughs> on Sofa Club that it was ridiculous. So like I spent all 2020 featuring, I'm trying to remember if um, that was the first, I, I may have did something for um, another artist, uh, album before that but with me and Eugene together that was like really our first um thing like that we did that was locked in with me you know rapping and him mixing it all down and everything and then doing a video for it so that was just so dope yeah I feel like that was kind of like here's pretty black not not just the not just the poet not just the spoken word Mm -hmm. artist but here's pretty black the rapper like Right, y'all. Like, I don't think people were ready. We're gonna act, or I'm gonna ask you about uh, everyone's reception to it after we play this snippet really quick. Uh, So this is Eugene's IYF featuring Pretty Black. Why 
why you know I've been staying, but you keep playing. Games, you know I don't play. It's a time and place. You keep fucking around with me. I ain't got time to waste. I want a relationship, but it's more like a situation shit. And I'm tired of going back and forth with you on this basic shit. I'm laced with it. Cut from a different cloth. I be the realest. Turn this up. I want you to hear this. Kick back. I'ma make you feel this in a real, real strong way. You turn it up with me. You be the own way. You turn your back on me. You be the wrong way. Been fucking with you the long way. You want to sleep on me, but boy, you can do what you do. But if you fuck around and miss out on me, then my nigga, you sleeping on you. Trust. I don't want you in your feelings. Yeah, where's my horn? Where's my horn? Where's my horn? Yes, my horn. Hey! Damn! I love that down too. Man, I had to take it as a sound bite. So that was uh, Eugene O'Neill in your feelings, featuring Pretty Black Girl. So with the acting skills and just the presentation, uh, how did it feel fully stepping into your artistry like that? It was it was so fun. I mean, um, I did. It felt natural. It felt natural with us doing it. Um, Eugene is so easy to work with, and he makes you feel so comfortable that it's just like, let's go, let's get it. Yes. And so that's what we did. And um, I, I think it came out good. We I don't know if people could tell, but that was like a um, parody of a thin line between love and hate. So oh uh, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> and that was the the snippet intro to the song too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I love how you're like, Eugene does have a way of making you feel very comfortable. Like you've mm-hmm. known him forever and you must've got real comfortable because you was throwing that ass around. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, yeah, that go was, off, I sis. Think, go off. Like, <laughs> I think the part where he fell when we were going up the stairs, that was an accident. <laughs> It was so, like, keep that in there. It's like his feet really there. flew over his head. I yes. was like, oh, wow. And after <laughs> that, he's been getting abused in every video after that, though. <laughs> oh, it's like, it's he set I the know. precedent. He's just like, everyone's yeah. like, oh, we need you to be that dude. And I love that because Social Club Recording, how uh, there's a handful of artists, rappers, singers, writers, producers. Um, I love how you guys correlate with each other and borrow each other and just being like, hey, I need you for this video because it truly takes a village. Do you think that being with not only a recording label, but a recording label that serves as a family, everybody seems to be on the same page. Everyone seems to get their work done, like, you know, just heads down, focus, getting it done. Do you think that's made the biggest the biggest difference in getting accomplished what you've accomplished this year so far? Absolutely. I couldn't imagine going into like, and I've had opportunities to um, go with uh, major labels, but at this point in time, because the industry has changed so much, I was like, I want to do this with the indie label. I would prefer to do it with the indie label. And it's because of that whole family vibe, the whole family feel, everybody just automatically meshed together and supported each other so greatly that it was just like, it just made it so much easier to come in and do something that I've, you know, fully never done before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. Like I, I swear it takes a village. It makes such, it makes the mm-hmm. biggest, biggest difference. Um, so what was the reception when you came out with IYF, when you came out with that snippet, like everyone, I'm sure everyone's like, oh, okay, yeah, pretty black raps, like whatever. What was the reception to that? Was they ready? Cause I was ready. <laughs> they, I mean, they just loved that song. Like that to them. I mean, cause you know, it has a Drake vibe and it does. And just like, I think we released it in the summertime. So everyone was, they were, they were just on the song. It's like never been one time that I played that song and people weren't like, this is it. This is like a fucking hit. So I uh, know everyone loved the song. Um, they just love the combination of me and Eugene together on the song. And then they were, they definitely love my verse. They, um, because a lot of people hadn't heard me like, you know, really rapping like that. So once they did hear it, they were like, damn, like you got off. <laughs> like, Man, for did you get off? What was the reception <laughs> to underdog? Because I feel like IOIF was like, okay, cool. She put down some bars. Awesome. But like underdog, the song that we played at the beginning, like you, literally like you woke up and chose violence like it's just like holy (laughs) shit like (laughs) what was the reception to underdog (laughs) underdog that's it's crazy because like i still i get people literally that single's been out for 
since August of last year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm literally getting people like every other day, screenshotting pictures of it on their like radio or like sending me like, I'm listening wow. to underdog right now. I'm working out to underdog right now. Man, or, like, that I'm is a workout song. In my car. Oh, yeah, man. it's a different <laughs> workout song. But they're like, I'm bumping. Like somebody just um, hit me the other day. I was bumping underdog on repeat the whole way home. So it's like that one. That one gets a lot of um, reception, but I know when we shoot the visual for it, which we're um, coming up on that in a few, in about a week or so. Yeah. Um, I know it's, it's going to really like pop. That's because... one of them songs that make my lips curl. Like, it's just like, yeah, like, right? Like, girl. <laughs> and I heard, um, I heard screeching tires in the beginning. They sound like motorcycles. Right. So is that like, is yeah. that a representation of like the biker boys? Like, what's that about? Um, the shit, where did we get that? I mean, the whole theme of the like when you look at the hook on the song and i'm like it's social club when i ride out with it yeah, yeah. shotgun when i and you know sh- excuse me social i don't even know my own shotgun when i ride out with them that's okay when girl i, I got it, out with it. <laughs> club when i ride out with it. so it's basically talking about it, it's basically in that in that essence it's like some badass like you know i'm just, we just riding out i'm riding shotgun um, we right now we doing what we got to do. Like I'm down for it. And like, um, just, and I'm just telling you to make room for the underdog. So hey. that's, that's where you get the tire screeching from. Cause we right now. <laughs> dope, dope. Do you have a concept for the video yet? We do. We do. It's going to be, um, I was thinking black and white, but, um, we're probably gonna have some color to it. Maybe a few scenes that are black and white and we're just going to, um, we're going to have some, I want to give too much away because I want y'all to be surprised. Yes, yes. But, um, but yeah, we're, we're trying to get some some nice cars in there, some good uh, just showboating and shit. So yeah, it'll I'm be a fun so video. so excited. Simplistic, simple, but it, it, it'll be a good visual. I was just thinking that. I was like, I enjoy mm-hmm. visuals like that where it's usually more about the editing um, as opposed mm-hmm. to like the editing and production as opposed to like all, like I love aesthetics. I love, you know, like mm-hmm. a whole bunch of stuff going on, but when you have such a powerful song, you almost don't want to take away from the words and like right. listening to it. So I, mm-hmm. I love that concept. I think that's going to be very powerful. You got black and white, which is very yin and yang, very feminine, mm-hmm. uh, feminine, masculine energy. That's so like, right. go off girl, go yeah. off. Um, so you have, uh, you have underdog, which is very like, you know, just like really in the belly and then you have another song that I love that is not released yet, uh, but it's the title of the album, Bantu Knots, the actual song Bantu Knots. I begged Eugene for the unmix. Like, it wasn't even mixed. I was like, I'll take this version. I'm going to just listen to it. It's totally fine. Like, I just like my heart and my soul needs this. Mm-hmm. Another, another powerful song. Like, again, I just want to point out, which I'm sure that you know, how aligned this is right now you know especially with Mm -hmm. everything going on especially with everything going on not only with race but also with women just women in general this whole conversation about uh women waking up to their femininity the power in their femininity standing up to uh misogyny and just you know the the patriarchal views that Mm -hmm. are put onto women and it's 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 a beautiful but also really fucking scary time right now and it's Mm -hmm. um music like this is medicinal so i'm really excited for you know not only the worlds but our fellow women not only women but fellow women of color to hear this type of song can you describe Mm -hmm. what bantu knots is about yeah so um Again, it's about that situation that I kind of described at first, mm-hmm. but it just goes into much more detail. So it's like playing, it's like a mixture of, um, it's based upon true events, I like to say. So it's like a little bit of, of experiences from my sisters, from my friends, from my mother, from myself. And it's kind of all rolled into one um, based around that whole buckwheat comment and um, how I was treated by my job after it was done too, because that's just, that's a whole nother story, but it's basically chronologically tells a story of, of um, how as little black girls from the time that they're little girls, they have to defend their look. We have mm. to defend our, how we look. We have to defend the texture of our hair, the, the pigment of our skin and how we wear our hair and, and what we do and, and how we got teased for it when we were younger and now how they want to emulate it now that we're older. And so that's what, 
the song Bantu Nuts. I don't know if you have a clip of it or if you're able to play it. Um, I don't. Not, Do you have it? You want to send it real quick? Um, I can send it over to you. Uh, Bantu Nuts. So we got an exclusive listen. Her album drops Bantu Nuts on April 10th, right? April 10th. Correct. <coughs> Excuse me. Not COVID. Uh, hold on. No. <laughs> We have to warn everyone these days. Oh, just not COVID. Didn't get my vaccine yet, but that's not COVID. Um, <laughs> so real quick. So this is an exclusive listen, y'all. Her album hasn't even dropped. It will be dropping April 10th. So this is a quick snippet of uh, Bantu Knots. And I'm so excited for y'all to hear this. Black girl with the 4C hair and the dark chocolate skin from the Northeast. Used to tell me all the boys only ignored me. That's because they didn't know how to bask in your glory. Magnificent, your style is omnipotent. That means it's everywhere at the same time. Natural born trends that elevate their mind. Didn't know you was royal by design. Remember that. And if you're ever in the situation, let me teach you about a little patience and a little lesson. If you're ever in the presence of a peasant, never take off your crown for a second. Remember that. But they all gon' laugh at me. That's cause your hair defies gravity They got their jokes, let them get them in And they gon' laugh like it's a DC comic But they still gonna marvel at your melanin See you walk around with your crown And they wanna try to take it They see your style and your grace And they wanna Shout out to walk Nair. around try to fake it But it's not fair They don't even care They see the power in your hair black girl now a woman Yay. walked into her office and she's done so that is just a quick snippet <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> that is just a quick snippet, y'all. But that is Bantu Knots. That is like, whew. That's one of those like healing, like just reminding me of like I am the shit. Like if I'm having a bad day, I would turn on something like that. Like just it, it's dope. it's like one of those like and when you were rapping it when you were like being in the room like I'm just mm -hmm. telling anyone if you ever have the chance to be in a studio with artists who are creating and writing and laying stuff down and even if you're not interested in music be in that room because the yeah. energy of creativity that flows amongst creators is fucking insane. It is insane. It's you crazy. feed off of it. It's like molecular, like, oh. So when she was yeah. writing that and she was putting it down, I was just in the corner like, I, oh my God, it's, I do have power in my hair. Like I could so relate. Cause like everything you were yeah. rapping about, I went through that. I hated my hair when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like there wasn't, I didn't grow up around people that looked like me. So right. you know, thank you. Thank you for being a light and, and writing something like that. Most definitely. And yeah, shout out Janera, that um the beautiful voice that you heard on the hook. That was her. I mean, I was like so shocked when she came and laid it down. I wasn't there at that session, but um she laid it down exactly how I wrote the hook. And I was like, this sounds exactly the way I want it. So, uh, oh, I love her um and her voice. So I think she just put the extra ice in on that whole uh track right there. But yeah, definitely that um that song was about um, basically empowering you. They see that how people see the power in our hair because um, there's a lot of um, people who want to, who don't want to be black or don't want to be of a, a woman of color um, of, of those type of things, but they'll like to take our, our hair. Even so much has gone so far as to change their whole hair texture to try to emulate us because they know the power in that. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically what that hook was about and what that song was about. Like they put you down for wearing it. Then they turn the right back around and they try to copy it. Man and, is, oh, and then try to call it something else. Like and try to like call it something else. Boxer braids. Those yeah, that is the appropriation. Is, is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but that's that what's up. It's, it's uh, we definitely, definitely need more music like that. We need just more conscious music, you know, like um, I like to refer back to my one episode, you know, our hoes really winning. And the whole yeah. consensus behind that was there's just one narrative that's being pushed mm -hmm. to the forefront right now. There's there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that narrative. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with being sexy. There's nothing wrong with putting yourself out there and owning your body mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But not every woman aligns with that message. And that's exactly. okay, too. So 
I appreciate this stuff. Cause it's like, if I don't feel like being ratchet today and I feel like being conscious, I have the option. You know what I'm saying? I have the option and that's, <laughs> that's a good thing. And, and like, yeah, like you said, like, um, back to the whole woman, women in hip hop, like thing, um, it's, it waters us down. Like when mm. people like mention, um, female hip hop artists, female rappers, especially dudes are like, I don't know, all of y'all rap about the same thing. Y'all rap about fucking and sucking and blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yep. <laughs> but there's, there's, so, there's another whole spectrum of, of women, female rappers and MCs out there who don't rap about that. But because that gets put to the forefront and that's so the mainstream that you see, that's the perception of that's what all female rappers exactly. do. So we, we really, it's really hard to earn respect in this uh genre of music and like you literally have to claw your way through the fucking game like no this is what it is so that's basically what I wanted to do with um this album and I'm hoping I'm giving off like you mentioned that feminine and masculine energy Mm -hmm. at the same time Mm -hmm. because one of my favorite um female hip-hop or just one of my favorite rappers in general um is little kim and the hardcore album is one of my favorite albums of anything of all time and she yeah she talked about it but it was just her it was her energy behind it the way that she laid it out there and that air um where you didn't hear females rap like that i think that's what made her so bossy and so just you know alpha and just out there. So, I mean, like, you know, I got a project coming up based off of that as well, too. Oh, shit. We about to hear yeah. that. Oh, we don't hear the ratchet side of pretty boy. I love it. I love, I love hearing the ratchet side of artists. I remember when uh, yeah. Justin Bieber first came out and I was like, yeah, I can't wait till he becomes a hoe. He's going to make some good music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you did it. All right. Yep. And I was like, you see, told you. Right. Told you. No, that's what's <laughs> up, though. Like, it's, um, I forgot what I was going to say behind that. But, uh, there's always, I don't know, it's it's like there's two, there's so many layers to just being a human. And then on top of that, mm-hmm. being a woman, you know what I'm saying? So there's nothing wrong with uh tapping into those different versions of yourself. And there's no reason to be ashamed of that. So like I love, I love the fact that you're like, here is my high vibrational side, here's my shadow side, and we just right. go to coexist together. <laughs> so that's phenomenal. And like, um, and you know, before Cardi B, before Ruby Rose, before Saweetie, there was Lil' Kim. Nobody was doing it. Before shit, before Nicki Minaj, there was Lil' Kim. Nobody Mm -hmm. was doing what she she was doing. And that's why everyone was like, it was shock value. It was like, holy shit, she is rapping like a dude, like a man. Oh my God. (laughs) Definitely. Now they they always say Nicki's a queen and I I love Nicki too, but I'm like, are you guys like literally like forgetting about Lil' Kim? Like she's the blueprint to what all of you females are doing absolutely at 1000 percent. like there's not one outfit there's not one position there's not one song that i hear that i'm like lil kim did that she did that at me leave a message and leave a comment in the message in the in the description or leave a comment down below if if you don't agree let's talk about it i want to talk about it um (laughs) she even trailblazed uh lace fronts like wigs and shit like all of that first one to like really come with all those colorful wigs like even in um the long nails, uh, the like gold you, jewelry. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yep, absolutely. So we gotta give props where props is due. And you know, we we wouldn't have we wouldn't be as far as we are, not only as women, but women of color. There is that added mm-hmm. fucking intersection that means a lot. If it wasn't for women like that, we would not be where we are today. We still have leaps and bounds to go, mm-hmm. but Cardi would not be a number one mainstream artist if it wasn't mm-hmm. for artists like like Lil' Kim, Nicki Minaj, right. all of them, you follow that train up, they literally paved the way for that woman right. to get where she is. For it to be acceptable of like, she went from stripper to number one selling fucking artist. That Period. shit did not happen overnight. <laughs> that was years right. and years of cultivation, years of Absolutely. women cracking the concrete. So hell yeah. Like it's Absolutely. I just motivated myself. It's like, oh, I love women. Right? I love women power, I man. You me. I'm like, damn. <laughs> <that's some good." laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, uh, what other, um, songs or what other moves can we expect to hear on the album? Oh gosh. It's shit. Like, I think I described it one time as like each Bantu knot is like, uh, something different, like a story. So you hear that, uh, that, you know, that real grimy shit from, um, 
uh, the underdog track and then you hear the real conscious, like uplifting um, thing from the Bantu nuts. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember my time. <laughs> like, I'm pull up, like, let me go down the track listing. But you Do get it, that. Right? <laughs> you're also going to get some, some uh, banter between guys and girls on relationship shit. Um, I have a song called Choose Up. And I already know that some people are probably going to think it's about them, but I literally wrote the song before anything Ooh, happened. So, <laughs> yeah, that one, that one's about, um, and I know people have been through it, especially females, but like you've been in situationships before where the guy doesn't want to like really step up, but you like, he wants to act like you're his. And then somebody else comes along and like, Hey, so you like, you choosing up, you're going to choose this dude. I have a song like that. Um, I have a song called all night which is like one of my favorite songs on there. That one's, yeah, mm, that's the mood <laughs> setting song. That's the baby making song and the baby yes. mama making song. <laughs> yes, yes. That, that one, yeah, that one's a really explicit. That one's like Lil' Kim hardcore. So that's a good one. You're going to also get um, political because a, a lot of the um, album was recorded during, like right before the election started. Um, right going into that, um, right when George Floyd stuff happened, Breonna Taylor happened, you're going to get a lot of political stuff. You're going to get um, a look into some of my spiritual practices um, because I do have um, a few songs that go in the, that are like a whole like little middle thing. And it's um, talking about like African spiritualism, voodoo, mm. things of that sort. So you're going to get, you're going to get a mixture of, a lot of things on this album. Like I said, it's really like pro black and pro woman, but it's, you're going to get such a mixture. And then another track I'm really excited um, for you guys to hear is is the cypher track where I feature it's me, um, me stacks, which is the CEO of of social club, Eugene. um, And then Aaron Swift is on there and we just go ham on it on, on a cypher. She's the only woman in the cypher too. That's kind of like the monster uh, Nicki Minaj did when she did monster to this day, to this day, that verse, I'm just like, she shat on all y'all. She shat on every that single one of y'all. Everybody loves the, the monster <laughs> and the uh, Roman verse from her. Yes. And that, so she can't get past those. Yes. Those are like... And I'm not comparing you to her, but it's just like, I can't think of anyone else that has put themselves in that line of fire or like, right. like stepped up like that, aside from Lil' Kim and stuff like that. So it's right. just... It's very much, I'm grabbing these reference points, these reference points to really have people conceptualize like, definitely women aren't out here really doing it like that. Not like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, there, <laughs> there's a... No, Nikki, Nikki spit, so to be compared to her in any light or have my name mentioned, it's like... Okay, that's good, good. Spit. I was like, not yeah, to keep no, comparing, you know no. what I'm saying? Because there's <laughs> definitely, like, I've worked for radio stations in the past. I've been able to, mm-hmm. you know, get well-known rappers and I'm going to use some heavy air quotations here who've legit yeah. been like, please don't ask me to uh, freestyle on air. And I'm like, I right. figured as much. You didn't seem like the type yeah. that I would do that. You know what I'm saying? So right. like, it's very, I appreciate the art form. Um, right. What are you looking for people to take away with this project? When you imagine people listening to this, what do you want them to take away? I want for women to walk of of every woman. I want, first of all, women who are non-Black to get some type of understanding. Uh, just even if they don't agree or whatever, I want them to see it from my lens. So on that end, I want that. On the end of Black girls and Black women and other uh, women of, uh, you know, Afro... Cent- what the Afrocentric? hell is that? Afrocentric? Afro. It's Afro late, y'all. It's, like it's been Afro. a long day. It's Friday. It's almost nine o'clock. So don't be too hard on your girl, okay? Uh, <laughs> other women of African descent is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, okay. To to walk away from a feeling empowered, like that they hear some shit that's for them. Like this is specifically for you. This is yours. Take mm. it. Uh, replay it. Let it get into your psyche. Like. Make it so that, you know, when you listen to my album, it feels like you can go out and do whatever the fuck you want to do. Like, there's no stopping you, like nothing. Like, especially when my All Hell the Queen song, which is the um, Queen Latifah Unity sample. Like, like, I want you to feel like 
a boss ass queen <laughs> and Girl. go out and do whatever Girl. you can. And then for the men, I just I want you to respect it. Like, but to be honest, I can't I mean, men, they love my shit. Like they really do. I can be that talking a lot. I, I don't bash men in my music at all. But if I made a song that bash men, men would be like, damn, that's that's dope. They probably <laughs> would. They'd probably be like, okay, okay. <laughs> You said it. Yeah. You said it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Exactly. And for men to be receptive of music that is intended for women mm-hmm. is incredible. And it speaks volume to the versatility of your words. And like, right. even though you might be rapping directly toward two women, men, mm-hmm. especially men of color, are like, fuck, mm-hmm. I've been, you know, like, uh, people have said stuff about my hair and I didn't feel accepted because of that, you know, like it's the same microaggressions that they go through. So I can imagine that they can resonate with that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the reaction of, um, of everyone. Me too, girl. Me too. If those two songs (laughs) are, are any indication of what that album is going to be, we are definitely in for a treat. Um, I do want to ask, how have you changed or do you think that you came out at the completion of this project out on the other side of this project? Do you think you were the same or did you change? I think, um, I think my message is the same. I think I, I've, I think there was growth. I do think there was growth. I don't think, um, I changed like as a person or the, my foundation, but I do feel that there was growth, uh, throughout the project. It just, um, it just gave me that experience of going hard. Like, doing poetry and then doing music, especially when you're performing on stage, two totally different ballparks. I was not prepared for performing music on stage Mm. versus performing poetry on stage because it's just a whole totally different playing field. And um, I think it's given me that experience. I think it's, it's allowing me to grow as an artist and it's just, it's preparing me for my next projects to come. Describe that difference to me from when you, how long have you been doing uh, poetry, performing poetry? I've been performing poetry actually since, I don't want to give away my age, so let me count. <laughs> I've been doing a long I've been time. Doing, <laughs> right. I've, I've been doing a long time, probably 20 years. So I've been, um, been doing it since I was probably about like 15 years old, oh, wow. but I got real heavy in the game and like really um, built my brand and built my name as Pretty Black. Um, for about 10 years now. So it's, I'm really, really known for um, poetry. Um, I've done national things. I've, I've done a lot of things with the poetry, but just not with the hip hop. So you've been nationally recognized as a poet mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it just mm-hmm. seems like, and, and you know, uh, um, oh, slam poetry, that type of poetry <laughs> where you're, you know, rapping or saying poetry with a rhythm, it's very similar, I guess, to like hip hop or rap. So was that... Did that transition make sense to you? Like, how did that, what did that transition look like to you when you're like, oh, shit, oh, shit, I, th- I think I can do this. Like, what was that like? So, um, I've been rapping since, I probably was rapping before I was doing spoken words. Oh, I've been rapping okay. since I was like 12 years old. I just never fully went into this mode with, you know, I just never went this hard with it. Let's just say that. Yeah. So, yeah. um they are two different art forms. It's like some people do think that you can just take a rap and slow it down without a beat. And that's a spoken word. (laughs) But right. But, and you can, but it's still a a totally different, it's just, it's so different how the the art forms are so closely mirror each other, but yet they're so totally different. So it is um, a challenge to go from one to the other if you're not experienced at doing both. Um, It's a natural flow for me to do it though. I've just always been um, lyrically inclined um, and with a good cadence. So I can switch back and forth easily. but for others, it, it it does. It can take some practice. It can take yeah. some building. Skill to put it to into perspective, it. I'm not, I'm a writer. Like I'm very mm-hmm. much like I'm more literature. I'm more, I like write articles. Like that is my yeah. gift with words. But when it comes to, mm-hmm. and like, I can, I can pen a song, like, like a cute little mm-hmm. like pop song or whatever. Yeah. But when it comes to like banter, when it comes to freestyling, I had mm-hmm. no inclination. That muscle was just not there. <laughs> so when I met Eugene and I started dating Eugene, I started to be around more rappers and like their banter yes. was different and the way they spoke to each mm-hmm. other was different. And like, even the way they made fun of each other was different. And <laughs> I was like, I can't keep up. Like, it's just, everything right. was just coming off the top of their head or they're just randomly start mm-hmm. singing something. And I'm like, I want to play 
but I yeah. don't know what to say. Uh, like, <laughs> like, so like, <laughs> it's like, I want to be part of it. So, but over the years, him and I have been dating for a while. So I've been in the game for a minute. Mm-hmm. I noticed myself, like we'll be fucking around or whatever. And then yes. all of a sudden I'll come out with like a little bar. I'll be like, ah. Wait a second, I'm getting better. Like, yeah. Out, yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I'm That's like, it. if that took years to just develop just the light-sided, not serious part of it. So I can only imagine what, you know, more than 20 years of practicing that and being in that zone and just working that muscle, like what that does. So it's it's incredible. It's really awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it definitely takes a uh, it, you definitely do have to work on your craft. It's especially when it comes to freestyling. That shit is not for the faint of heart. I've, like you said, I've seen some like well known, well known artists like get put on the spot, and they're like, uh, I don't know. And like I'm kind of in this. I'm like I could freestyle my ass off in my car because, like I said, I don't. Uh, this whole album, I didn't write a word on a on a piece of paper. This whole album. Okay, Jay Z. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Jay- <laughs> right. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. Yeah, um, yeah. I wrote nothing down. Like everything starts as a freestyle, and I build on it from the hooks to the the verses and everything. So. Um, it like I said, I could do it, and I think it's a comfort thing when you're in front of people. You're probably feeling more pressure to if you do slip up in your freestyle. That's damn, what the fuck is he or she saying? But when you're alone and you're freestyling, there's no one around to hear you fuck up a, a bar or nothing, so you could just go at it. Yeah. And I think that's really what it is. And so it really takes a confident rapper to um to come out and and literally like freestyle on the spot. Um, I remember, but I did have a homeboy Nectar. And um, he's he's like a worldwide DJ right now, but um, he rapped too. And he, I remember he get used to give me like tips in high school on how to how people actually come out and freestyle. And he was like, people already have their punchlines and their like uh, metaphors and things in in place. Mm-hmm. They just had to add you know they have to fill in the blanks around it and then hit them with that punchline so that that helped like tips like those help when it comes to like freestyling on the spot it's see, not that's interesting i see mm-hmm. i wonder how many people so i'm not a rapper i'm not a musician in that regard so of course i wouldn't like i i wouldn't have known that there's a structured approach to freestyling like you hear freestyling mm-hmm. like, oh it's off the top of the head like whatever yeah. um even with comedy like there's a structure to when the punchline should go like stuff like that mm-hmm. so i wonder how many uh rappers know that or don't know that or like there's an approach to the punchline there's an approach to get to where you need to get that's interesting Mm -hmm. is there any Mm -hmm. advice that you would give to um up-and-coming rappers that you know maybe are a little scared to jump into ciphers or don't haven't found that confidence within themselves yet yeah my i mean my best advice for like just being a part of ciphers because i've been doing i've been jumping in cypher since i was like a freshman in high school, like the only female jumping in them. Um, j- you, when you get in a cypher, you don't have to come in freestyling, like have your shit already prepared, right? If you like to write, write you, write you a bunch of fucking raps that could go with any beat or that can just go acapella and then just, just get in there and then show your vibrato. Like that's all it's about. Like it doesn't matter if it's, you wrote it, you wrote it, but jump in there and do it. Like don't wait. Just go for it. I think everybody, well, maybe that's my preconceived notion or my microaggression towards the craft. But when I think freestyle, Mm -hmm. you know, I hear about like, I've heard the term growing up, like, oh, he's a backpack rapper. Like he's not really rapping off Mm -hmm. top. Like, you know, he's got, Mm -hmm. he's already gotten Mm -hmm. written. Is there a shame to that? Like, is there an ex certain expectation? Yeah. I mean, in hip hop culture there, there, I mean, especially like back in the day, that was like a. (laughs) <laughs> I remember you. that. Like, it was be like, oh, you a backpack rapper. It's like, oh, yeah. oh, you wag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, you got shame for that shit. But like, I think now, I mean, even then, who who doesn't? Like nobody, I don't think there's anybody who literally just freestyles 100% of the time or like when they hop in cypher. Like it, if you watch the BET cyphers, all the, everybody wrote that shit. Like none of that shit is off the head mm-hmm. um if you even i don't know if you watch the show rhythm and flow that was the show that d smoke won and that's how d smoke became oh wait that's the uh, D-Smoke, uh that was the one with cardi b and uh chance the rapper as judges yes. okay and then um he's the bilingual rapper 
Mm-hmm. Is he Afro Latino or is he just black and no Spanish? No, he's not Afro Latino. He a nigga. Man, I said go off. <laughs> he's a nigga. Go off. Go off. He's a nigga. He's, he's speaking Spanish me. better than I do, and I'm half Mexican. <laughs> I grew up with Mexican. No, I was like, he's a king. I love. I love these smoke. I'm not gonna call him a nigga, but no, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. He's, he's, it's all love, he's, nigga. He's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I say nigga, it's not like a demeaning thing, but no, he's from Inglewood. He's um, he just he's gosh their whole family is brilliant god damn it he's um he just decided to learn spanish i think he taught it because he was a teacher at inglewood high so i think that he learned spanish so that he could teach it and he's just fluent in it like that yeah he's dope but if if you anybody gets a chance to watch rhythm and flow watch that show because it does show you the back it shows you the behind the scenes of what goes on um, when you're preparing for a cipher, when you're preparing for a battle or just a music video or a song, they write their shit. I yep. mean, that's what you do. As long the only thing that I shame when it comes to that is if you have ghostwriters. I don't go for that shit. Mm. I don't and like a ghostwriter for like a hook or something, that's cool. But if you're a MC or you're a rapper and you have somebody writing your um verses, I don't really I don't Yeah, because really that it seems like a front. You're presenting yourself as something that yeah. you're not, you know? So it's yeah, I can understand the difference in that. There's a difference between yeah. having like, you know, and like you hear that all the time. It's like a number one single goes out, like Beyonce, for example. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. well, she has like 50,000 writers and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, when you're writing like an actual project, like an actual. You're like, going to have. You have yeah. to. It's not like you're yeah. sitting in a room with three people. It's like, okay, let's do a mixtape. And it sounds all one dimensional. Mm-hmm. Like the reason why it sounds so just rounded and it's just like, holy shit, it's, every, it's hitting every part of my body. There's different ears. There's different producers. There's different right, billions of writers, writers billions yes. of fucking writers in that room. And like, and I, think, <laughs> I know it's a double standard, but I think it's okay for um, singers and like R and B artists and country, whatever genre of singing that you do. I think it's okay when they don't write their own songs because their voice is their vehicle to bring the song to life. Yep. With a rapper. It, we're not using our our voice per se in the fact of like we're singing or having like something like that. We're using our skill set of of our lyricism and how we put together something in our cadence and our delivery. And I think that you writing your own stuff is what adds to your artistry. Unlike a singer where they're actually using their God given gift to freaking belt out a song like. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you make an excellent point, an excellent, excellent point. Cause like a rapper, the whole premise behind rap being is your artistry of words, your wordsmith. That's the whole fucking exactly. point. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. People get sensitive around that when they find out that their favorite rapper has ghostwriters. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's honestly really heartbreaking. Um, it is. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I do have a couple palate cleanser questions that are Nothing to do with music, but I just want to ask you, but is there anything else that you want to touch on that you want to talk about uh, before we start to close out this episode? No, just April 10th, everybody. It's going to be available on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon Music, uh, iTunes, Apple, download it support your uh local artists who are trying to get out there who are going to make it big but we need your help doing that so download it hey follow all right me. guys follow me too on instagram pretty that's spelled regular underscore black is spelled b-l-a-q and then the number one that's how you'll find me on instagram follow me and of course everything will be in the description box so it is just one click away but y'all y'all need to follow her on spotify so you ready because y'all not <laughs> ready but you need to be ready so uh let's get to the palette cleanser questions this is going to be dramatic <laughs> It's dramatic. So (laughs) the first question, what is one song that's on your playlist that no one would expect it to be on there? Ooh, look, I'm like pulling up my shit right now. I'm a, I'm not only just a hip hop head, I'm a freaking music head. Like I can't go a day without it. So one thing, I don't know, it'll probably be something from like, um, fucking hauling oats okay like <laughs> who is this girl i love, I love hauling oats so it's like you'll hear um or even ambrosia like oh like she's it, um, um yes yeah how, um her. what you call it um no not marcia ambrosia oh. that's my girl okay um but it was a group i think 
they were white or something. I don't know, but it's just that's how much I feel, feel for you, baby. How much I feel? It's it's like from the seventies or some shit, but like you you'll hear like songs like that. So probably that one and um something uh, anything from Holland Oaks, uh, Sarah Smile. Dope. That song. If yeah. there is next question, if there's anyone in the industry does not have to be a musician, any celebrity, I guess business person that you look up to that you could sit down and have a one on one with, nothing romantic, just literally one on one. Maybe you smoking a blunt, just shooting the shit. Who would it be? Oh, there's a few people. I would have said, like, back in the day, I probably would have said um, Damon Dash. Right now, I'm going to say um, E-40, only because, <clears throat> excuse me, shit. I'm going to say <laughs> E-40 because he's, um like, an alcohol tycoon right now. Like Really? Yeah, he, um, his, of course, you know, he has his Earl Stevens. He started with the wines and then he went into tequila and cognac. And so right now, and he has just a shitload of business ventures and he's from Cali. He's from the Bay, but he's still, he's Cali. So, um, I think I would sit down with him because that's kind of like one of the avenues I'm looking to going into is into like the spirits and, um, wine and, um, alcohol industry. So I would definitely pick his brain about that. Yes, yes, yes. I'm borrowing this one question from the China show because I was like super stuck on this one. Uh, So I think it's a really good question. If you believed that you were an animal in a past life, what animal do you think that you were? A hummingbird. Oh, you said that fast. Girl, it took me like three minutes to think of an answer. (laughs) That's dope though. It's my spirit animal. So I already knew like for sure that that's what it was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dope. I still haven't figured out my spirit animal. I think I did like a vision meditation once. And I want to yeah. say there was a certain, and I told um, China this too, but I, don't, I, I didn't tell her the vision meditation part. So I was, I was speaking confidently. Like I'm pretty sure I was a jungle cat at some point, but not explaining to her like why I thought that. Right. But that's like, dope. yeah, like for, I don't know if it's a panther or a jaguar or a cheetah, but I know it's some sort of a jungle cat. Like, something I was, along there. yeah, that's something dope. along those lines. I had, I didn't go deep into that meditation to like really unpack it, but yeah. it was definitely that. But I gave her some bullshit, not even a bullshit answer. I just really, <laughs> lo- I just really love this animal. Have you heard of the, the honey badger? I heard of honey badgers before, Girl, yeah. Girl, them motherfuckers is thugs. They, they aren't scared of anything. Like, you need to- You hear the name honey in it. You think they're all sweet and docile. Then it's like, nah, them motherfuckers are some gangsters. They <laughs> will, I'm telling you, they will get froggy with lions. They will eat rattlesnakes. And rattlesnakes are the one of the most poisonous snakes out there. Yeah. This motherfucker, there was a documentary. Please, y'all, go watch this documentary because it is <laughs> wild. This honey badger- <laughs> These freaking scientists are following the honey badger around, right? So it's like super late at night. This honey badger is eating a rattlesnake and it's swelling up while it's eating. So it's like, oh shit, it's reacting to the venom. It's about to die. So he like falls over slowly and just like, just goes into this coma, like on his back. And we're just like, damn, this nigga dead. He dead. But the scientists were like, the scientists were like, we were going to leave. You know, it's like four hours later, we were going to leave. But all of a sudden we see him move. And this motherfucker got up. And continue to eat the rattlesnake. Damn. Now you said to have me as soon as we get off honey badger. Girl, <laughs> fascinating. Fascinating oh, animal. Wow. I had never seen it. So I was like, if I have to choose to be one, I'm going to go ahead and say the honey badger. Because it's all about, That's he's awesome. about his snacks. He's about his snacks. Yeah. <laughs> he's about his food and about his business, okay? I'm I saying. I'm saying. So That's dope, though. That's dope, though. Do you know... Um, like, does the hummingbird have any particular meaning to you? Like, does it resonate with you? Or are you just like, no, I know that's what I was. Um, it resonates. Like, anytime I need, like, um, a sign of reassurance or, like, um, a- affirmation about, like, you know, it's going to be okay or spirit guides are with you or anything like that, um, a hummingbird will appear. And so, like, even, like, when I, in my old place, like, um, Anytime I was feeling like I was vibrating low or I was feeling sad or depressed or anything like that, um, a hummingbird would fly right up to my window. Shut up. Just fly right up to my window and it'll just 
stay there for a while and then it would just go away. And then I'm like, okay, I'm better. Yeah. And then there's some at my parents' house. There's a, um, my dad actually, he, my dad doesn't, I don't even know how he goes and does this, but he like went and bought like a little hummingbird uh, feeder and he like puts food out there. And so there's like hummingbirds that come near my parents' um, backyard and stuff too. So Look at this yeah, time, definitely. So I'm just like, that's just, oh my gosh. Like that's <laughs> like, I feel like hummingbirds, <laughs> like exactly. I was like, I feel like hummingbirds like don't do that. Like, I don't really see hummingbirds yeah. fly around like that. So that's, that's awesome. Like that's, that's an interesting connection. I love signs like yeah. that. I love seeing like, that's super random. That has to mean something. That's super exactly. dope. That's super dope. If you could pen a song, any song, we're not going to say raps because we frown, we shame ghostwriters. <laughs> but if you could pen, if you could pen a song for anyone, who would it be and what genre music would it be? It would it would definitely be like um shit I get is Neil Soul even still around anymore Neil Soul I think that's like I think Neil Soul is like a is a lost genre but I would want to do it for like um uh, any kind of new artist like because I wrote like if you hear like a lot of the um hooks on my album too I wrote everything for that the the melodies and things for that as well I just can't sing. <laughs> But um, when I, I googled Neo that. Soul, the artists that popped up: Erica Badu, mm-hmm. D'Angelo, Jill Scott, mm-hmm. Lauren Hill, Maxwell, Anthony Hamilton, yep. John Legend. Yeah, yeah, we still got a yeah, lot of Neo Soul. Yeah, everybody from that era. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, um, you know who I would? I would like to do something for um, Sir. Oh you, shit! Yes. yes. Oh my god! That, you know that's sir. my brother. Who? That's D Smoke's brother. Stop it. Wow, mm-hmm. that family is brilliant. Brilliant family. So I would love to do something for him or um Ari Lennox. Yes, Ari Lennox. Ari Lennox. Absolutely. Jasmine yeah. Sullivan. Some of them. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that's like Neo Soul on steroids. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like right? it's like, yeah, it's interesting how genres genres of music evolve. Of yeah. sure with the times, the cultures, philosophies, technology on top of that too. True. Like, like True. it's just, it's really awesome to see. Um, I think that's it for my uh palate cleanser questions. Ooh. But uh yeah, man, I just want to thank you. I had a lot of fun. This was this went great. Thank you thank for you. your patience today. Um and don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, girl, the technical difficulties, but we get it done. I know how it goes. We get it done. We get it done. But I want to thank you so much for your time, for your energy. Um, again, the album Bantu Knots drops April 10th. Is it gonna be Spotify, iTunes, everywhere? Everything, everything, everything. all digital platforms. So Spotify title, um, Apple Music, Amazon Music, everywhere you could stream music from, it will be there. Uh, yes. give me those go on Spotify and listen definitely I think there's a pre um uh what you call it a pre-purchase link or something that okay. we have anyway okay probably on iTunes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes yes just go find a pretty black do it hit her up find her she'll send you the link I'll send you the link uh as Absolutely. you wait for that album to drop go please listen and stream to underdog go do some donuts in the yes. parking lot you know like yes. go pump yourself <laughs> up go to the gym like yes. let's get let's do it let's get it done but uh that's it for today y'all y'all already know who it is is so far you know where to find me also don't forget to follow culture fuzz twitter's culture fuzz fuzz and uh that's it for today y'all we to see you thank you culture time. fuzz oh thank it's you, my everybody. pleasure Mwah. see y'all later <laughs> bye, bye. bye. Yeah. Thank you.